Psalms chapter 40. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. I waited patiently for the Lord. That's a hard verse right there because a lot of times when the Lord deals with us, He doesn't give us the, all the great details that we want. And sometimes the Lord just leaves us in the dark. And He, God, inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought, as God brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Let's read a note they have here. Out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my going. Now, if you read the life of Jeremiah, Jeremiah had, had something like this happen in his life. A miry pit. Whatever this hole in the ground is, it, it, it was muddy, gooey, muddy at the bottom. And all you do is sink it. It could have been an old well. It could have been just a hole where, you know, water and, and that just. But he was he was put into it. Jeremiah was put into it as a prison term for speaking the word. Why David ended up here, I don't know. But God brought him up out and put him on a rock, solid ground. Miry clay is not a rock. That's a contrast. And establish my goings, what God wanted him to do. Later on, he he grow up to be the king. He grow up to to put all the stuff needed for Solomon to build the temple, the rock. And he God had put a new song in my mouth. So God should put the songs in your mouth. And. There's nothing about going out publishing and, and putting a copyright on it and charging people. I bet you there's plenty of people who have had a song in their heart for the Lord and no one knows what the words were. And I bet you God recorded them as the book of Psalms is recorded. Wouldn't it be funny if whatever you're doing, you're just singing to the Lord and the Lord's up there just writing it down. And you bound for God. You're just happy in the Lord saying, and then when you get to the glory, when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, and you have those words show up like, Lord, I didn't know you wrote that down. Well, wait a minute, yeah, you wrote down Psalms. Maybe you wonder if God did re does record all our listen, the Bible says in, in uh Matthew twenty six, he's going to judge us of all our words, and if, if it's a song, if it's something in your heart, that's written down. Even praise unto our God. The song is about God, not about self. I mean, they did a they did a a song that was put out for the Lord, and they had somebody listen to it, not knowing what the song was, and they thought it was a love song written to written to her. That's a shame. Many shall see it. How do you see a song? And fear. How do you fear a song? And shall trust in the Lord. I guess your song is backed up by your living and your life as a Christian for us for a Christian. In other words, David lived by what he sung. I'm trying to think of his wife's name did Saul's daughter. She wasn't too happy. She had a con, con, con yeah. Micah had a, a pity party and a and an upsetting thing. How you know you out there doing all that blah 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 blah. But David said, "Listen, I did it for the Lord. I was, I, I you know, there was nothing pro profanic about it. Not with the nonsense that goes on in the churches today. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Well, some make money, stocks." And career their trust, and not the Lord, and respecteth not the proud. Pride and proudness is, is you need to get away from that as a Christian, everything to do with pride and proudness. Nor such as turn aside to lies. 
Now that proud and that lies there. Now maybe this is not a good foundation, but if I were to look at other scriptures and all that, which we're doing a chapter study, I would say verse 4, at the end of that ver well, verse 4, would be a great reason for a Christian not to get involved in politics. How many politicians, and I'm putting them all in the thing, puts, his, puts their trust in the Lord? There may be. How many politicians don't respect the proud? There may be. How many politicians don't turn to lies? Very, very few when you, you get those three qualifications. When you get involved in politics, you're getting involved with trusting in votes, trusting in, in money, trusting whatever it is to get that vote. You're, you're trusting in pride, and then you're getting into lies. I don't think, and personally, I don't think any Christian should get involved. Let the Lord and Satan do with, with the government affairs. You just go out there and go. The Bible says, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. It doesn't say, go all ye in the world and vote. It doesn't say, go ye in all the world and get a vote. One of the things that Satan asked, or, yeah, asked of Jesus, I guess you can say, is I'll give you all this, this rulership if you fall down and worship me. When you're getting government powers, you're getting in Satan's realm today. And more so in the tribulation period. You just not you're in the miry ground of verse two when you get politics. Let me just I'll close right there. I don't think it's a good thing to get into. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. Many, not a few. And that's a complete word. That is a complete turn of man in his worse. Many will die and go to hell, and few will get saved. But here, many is what God does. Go through the book of Exodus. Write down all the things that the Bible records about David on the run and David. And to think of all the things that are not recorded. What God has done good for David. And thy thoughts. Oh, we have a God that thinks. The Big Bang didn't think. Atheism doesn't have a God that can think. Which are to usward. Oh, you mean his creation to the Jews. Here. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. You know, one of, one of the most beautiful songs is to count your many blessings and name them one by one. And it's something you ought to do. You ought to sit down with a pen and paper or just sit down and just start counting things that God has done for you. And you can never, ever. I was sitting today and just something like, I don't remember what, what it was, but this the fact is, you know what? Something wasn't done at a particular time. I'm thinking, you know, I wonder why the Lord did that. And the Lord knows. While we sit there and complain about a red light, God knows what he prevented us from doing or getting involved in. And where, what I'm trying to say is there are things that God does in our life and we have no idea what, what he done. If you're going to count your many blessings, you would have to add up all the seconds in one day. Because he's giving you all those seconds. Oh, they were in pain or they were miserable or, or you know, but, but he gave them to you. David says, reckon. Every once in a while, just take a moment and think on what God has done for you. That is a Bible concept. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. You, you can't number them. It's beyond a number. 
It is more than a deficit of America. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. My ears have thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings hast thou not required. All right, now with verse 7, 8, and 9, and 10, is the Lord Jesus Christ in his first coming. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book that is written of me, and that's quoted. I believe it's Hebrews. And it's remarkable that I don't have a reference here where Hebrews 10. Eight, I got Jesus delight to do thy father God well. Oh my God, yea, thy love is within my heart. Jesus did all; he was one hundred percent complete. John four thirty four and John six thirty eight and Luke two forty nine. Jesus, I have preached righteousness in a great congregation. Oh yeah, he did. I wonder how many people Jesus preached to. And how many were for him at Calvary? Lo, I have not refrained my lips. Jesus speaking, O Lord, thou knowest. Jesus spoke everything that the Father wanted him to speak. Nothing more, nothing less. Now here's a prayer for a Christian. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. You done that to everybody you met? I listen, Paul told his personal testimony three times. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Now that's the Lord Jesus Christ in the first advent. I'm pretty sure before David's great sin, I guarantee he spoke of the Lord all the time. But have we been that faithful? Have we had the new song? This whole ver this whole chapter is proclaiming the Lord God of who He is. And I love what Pastor said last night. You know. I'm going to let my light shine and, you know, and and you're not doing nothing. Some people have told me once they gotten saved, then they find out the co-worker or, or their friend or somebody, oh, then they find out they were a Christian. And that person goes, I, I took part in your salvation because I let my light, no. I didn't know you were a Christian until now. And you don't get no charge by letting your light show. Faith cometh by hearing, not by lightning. Hey, I like that. Faith comes by hearing, but not by lightning. That's a good one. Some people keep the salt in the salt shaker. And don't spread it out. Salt ain't going to do no good if you, if you keep it in the, in the, in the little... A cardboard container. Matter of fact, I realized I've, I've known this thing. You keep salt in a container and it's in the back of the cabinet and you find it a year later, all oh, this is just rock hard. Either you got to break it up or, you know, do something with it or you just throw it out. Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me. Is that a good prayer to pray to God? It's in your Bible. Say, Lord, keep keep showing me mercy. And if you do right, God will answer that prayer. Read Fox's book. How can 
the people in Fox's Book of Mars survive all that. Mercy of God. There was one guy there to say that he was on he was on the stake to be burned, and the fires just would not consume him. I'm like, ow. Finally, they took him off and cut him in pieces and all that, but that's the mercy of God. O oh Lord, let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. So you want God's mercy, you want God's loving kindness, and you want his truth in your life. How are you going to get that reading a modern Bible? That's not the truth. Any Bible initials that is not KJV is a lie. So if you don't have the truth, where are you going to get God's mercy? Where are you going to get his loving kindness if you got a book that changes his word? I'll tell you what you pray if you know somebody who's got a Bible like that. You pray for God's tender mercy and loving kindness to show that person in his heart that that book is wrong. And that they need the truth. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Did you get that? This is the one that, that God said, hey, I'm going to bless you and your children for the rest of your lives. This is a man after my own heart, God said. You take Paul, one of the greatest Christians of all that we know. Count your many blessings, this, this book, this chapter said, and you cannot number them. Guess what? Count your many evils that happen in your life, and you can't number them either. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution, and all have sinned and come to shore of the glory of God. How about that one? How about evils that happen to you because you're a Christian? And how about evils that happen to you because you're a sinner? And there's some morons out there who will teach you. I don't mean the religion. I mean just morons and idiots. That, oh, we don't sin. You sin right there by lying. My iniquities. Aha, there's your sin. Have taken hold upon me. So that I am not able to look up. You know what Paul said? I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a verses in there. Hey, you got to read them very slow. That I want to do, I don't. That I don't want to do, I do. And he's talking about sin. Paul said, I am a sinner. John says, if we say that we are not a sinner, we make God a liar. And the word is not in us. David takes it as shame that, listen, I can't even look up. I can't look up to heaven. When Jesus took, which I don't think it was, I don't think it was, a, I had to check it, if it was probably the truth. He said when the Pharisee, I believe it was, and the publican stood there kneeling and praying, he said he wouldn't even look up. And smoked his breast and said, Lord, forgive me. I am a sinner. And listen, Lord, I can't even look up to heaven to you because of my sins. I can't look to glory. I am ashamed. I am ashamed of the fact is that if I were to look up, that maybe you show your face like Stephen saw. They are more than the hairs of my head. What? My sins. Face it. Get it down. Mark it down. Write it down. Know it down. Until the day you drop dead or the day that the Lord raptures out of here, you are going to sin. You need to apply 1 John 1, 9, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse you from your sins. You are not perfected yet.
But do not let that Paul say, shall we sin then, Paul says in Romans. God forbid. You ought to try and prayerfully try to stop. Dr. Ruckman says that God gives you enough fleas just to remind you you're a dog. That particular sin may not ever get victory in your life because that sin may be God saying, hey, you're a sinner. Okay, I'm going to do it. No, because when you get to the judgment seat of Christ, it's going to be, did you battle it? Did you put the armor on to fight that sin? Therefore, my heart faileth me. Do you have heart failure? Do you get Christian heart failure over your sin? Have you ever come into the throne room of God's grace on the gurney that God has to get the paddles and say, stand aside, and then zap you? And to give you new life with your sins. And you got a straight line. You're dead. I mean, you don't want to do it no more. You're tired of it. You're giving it up. You're dead. And God comes in with the paddles for life. You ever felt like that for sin? Have you ever tried to flatline sin? You know that, that little scope of the heart thing? That's our life. We're up, we're down, we're up, we're down, we're up, we're down. You know what that means? That means you're living. If you say you have no sin, you're, you're a straight line, that means you're dead. A straight line means death. You're up on the mountain. Yay! Boom. Up, down, up, down. Some are quick, some are fast, some are long, and some. Be pleased, O oh Lord. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Christians, be pleased, O oh me. I want to be pleased. No, be pleased, O oh Lord, to deliver me. Who can give you deliverance over sin? God. What do you do when, when you let God deliver you from the sin? You please him. If you're going to quit that sin just because to save you money, or because if it ain't for the Lord, you're not going to get victory. And you will not get victory if you do not want to give it up. And if you do not want to give up that sin, you are not pleasing God. Shall we close the Bible and open up a Reader's Digest or something? That's a hard saying. I, I have said that there are sins in our life that we're not going to get the victory over, but God is pleased when we try. By him. And if we don't try and we don't do it by him, he's not pleased. Oh Lord, make haste to help me. Give me the victory now. I'm tired. I'm too occupied with this thing in my life. Verse 13 is a good one of all the 13 because this is crying out for help against sin. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Now we're back to the enemies. Satan is your enemy. And he wants to just he can't destroy you. He can't take your soul to hell. But he can destroy you from what? Pleasing God, verse 13. You know what made Satan mad in Job? I'll tell you what made Satan mad. In chapter 2, God said, You see my, my servant Job, you see how well he does? And you moveth me 
against him without cause. God was happy. God was pleased. And Job was in his sin, wasn't he? But yet the Lord was pleased. How about that one? The end result with Job was he got right. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. Satan will stand ashamed one day. The entire alcohol industry, the entire tobacco industry, the entire illegal drug. Let me add, the entire legal drug used illegally one day will stand ashamed. I am completely for the fact that if somebody uses something, whether it be alcohol, cigarettes, tobacco, drugs, and die, the person that sold it, the person that made it, the person that had to deal with it is going to be accountable. And how many Christians sit making alcohol and making tobacco products? And getting a paycheck. While somebody's liver gets destroyed. While somebody's family gets killed on the street. While somebody's got black, dark, thick, gooey lungs. And stand in a church and say, I've got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. And... They're making a product that's killing people and destroying families and destroying lives. And the preacher is too afraid to preach the message because his entire congregation is built up on that junk. There are things that are evil. And you are to pray to God to get them out of your life. And if you don't get 100% victory, you better have a prayer life against it. You ought to be naked on your knees in tears saying, God, I can't stop. You want a revival? You try that. You see what kind of revival God will work with you, never mind America, with you. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame that say unto me, Ha 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 ha! There are people who look at you and they'll laugh at you. <laughs> guy in the street, <laughs> he's preaching about Jesus. <laughs> and wait till you stand and face Jesus. Well, that guy, where, 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 he reads his Bible in the cafeteria. <laughs> his family goes to church three times. <laughs> and then you'll stand before that Jesus one day. Wish you had listened to that co worker. Listen, that read that gospel chat. Listen to that street preacher. Listen to that preacher in the church that preached right. And then how many Christians won't do it because the people say, ha, 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 ha. We get laughed at. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. You know when that's going to happen? I know exactly when that verse 16 is going to happen. Are you ready? New Jerusalem for us, the Christian. The new earth for the Jew. We'll have all eternity to rejoice and be glad. I know Paul rejoiced. I know Paul was glad, but you think he was rejoicing and glad all the time?
I don't think so. Tracy has a, 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 a spine that looks like a train wreck, and she can't sit long periods of time. She can't stand long periods of time. What about Paul? He was stoned. I guarantee Paul hurt when he walked, when he sat, when he laid down and stood. How about when God wipes away all our tears? How about when he takes away all pain? How about when he makes things all new? Ooh, you want to talk about rejoicing? Well, he gives you a new body. Let such as love thy salvation. Remember thy salvation is Jesus Christ. Those that love the Lord Jesus Christ say continually, the Lord be magnified. Magnified means grow, grow. What grows with the Lord according to this chapter? Everything that he does for you. Has God done more for you today than he done yesterday? No. But what did you do wrong? But I am poor and needy. Humble. Who is David? He is the king. You wouldn't find anybody in Capitol Hill in America say, I am poor and needy. You'll never find them say they're rich. Because <laughs> if they say they're rich, they got to steal money from themselves to help the poor and needy. You, know, you never find them do that. I am unthinkable, poor and needy. Family doesn't want to have anybody to do with poor and needy. Neighborhood doesn't want to have anything to do with the poor and needy. Unless they get a tax credit. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. You know what Jesus Christ was born? Poor and needy. Mary did not wear blue and purple. She was poor. She couldn't even afford a lamb, even though she had one in her hands. The Bible says that if you couldn't afford a lamb, you could bring two turtle doves. And guess what she bought? She brought the poor, needy person's sacrifice to the, ta to the tabernacle or temple. And Jesus is the king. I just saw that. That's the Lord Jesus Christ right there. Thou art my help. I had a woman say, tell me, well, AA is, is my Jesus. All right, well, you may have got victory over alcohol, which I doubt. Let's see you 15, 20 years down the road. But only God can give you the complete victory and give you help. And not only give you help, but wash away your sin. Oh, Lord, I had this sin. And the Lord's like, what sin? Well, Lord, you know this particular sin in my life. No. You put it under the blood. I don't remember it. I remember it now. You just did it. But, well, I want to do it, but I, no, I don't want to do it now. Or I want to do this sin. I got distracted. That's God helping you. You know, you got to find time to do your sin. Well, I, I, my, my, my sin is thought. But David said, here, put a new song in your in your mouth. Even praise. Listen, you got, you got to think about it. Put a song in there. Have the song replace the, the thought. And my deliverer, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, will deliver you from your sins.
You know, it can be possible for you to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, fighting a sin your entire life. Now, I am not giving you an excuse to sin. Let, let me just say that right now. There is no excuse to sin. But if you fight the Lord on your entire life and you put under the blood like you like you're supposed to, according to scriptures, you know all that fighting. If you've done what the Lord told you to do, you'll stand the judgment seat of Christ and it'll never be known. But if you don't put it under the blood, that's how God can help and deliver you. Now, don't go running out of here like, oh, I can do whatever I want it. No. Because I think if you have that kind of attitude, even if you put it under the blood, I don't think God puts it under the blood. If you really want to do it, I mean, you know, you just come up with excuses. Oh, Lord, put it under the blood. Thank you very much. And then, no. That's not help from God, and that's not being delivered. On the other hand, there are people who, oh, I put it under the blood, and there's going to be surprised it's still going to be up there. You mean Christ? No, you know exactly what I mean. It's your attitude. It's your motive on why you did it. There are people who go before a judge and start crying just so the judge will be upset and, and pass a lower sentence. You can't do that with God. There's no crocodile tears. Make no tarrying. What's that? That's back in 13. I will need the help now. You know, I wonder if sometimes these people that do drugs that run out of money, maybe it's God helping their life. Someone's praying for them. And when they steal, now they've committed another sin. Maybe they just resist with the fact that I ain't got the money. Maybe uh, maybe God in heaven is trying to get me to completely quit. Just a thought. And then what is the last part of the thing? OMG. I get so sick and tired of this internet crap today. <laughs> OMG, TG, and all these stupid initials. You talk like a third grader, if not a third grader has more sense than you do. Oh my God, is a cry of, I am in a desire, trouble in my life right now. If you're going down the road and there's a track of trailer heading straight for you, head on, and there's nowhere for you to go, you're not going to break out the rosary and start counting beads. You ain't going to cry out the Buddha. You ain't going to cry out the Mohammed. You're going to cry, oh my God! Now let me ask you a question. Com compared to your sin, have you ever cried out in that sin, oh my God! OMG. I'll tell you what else what I think. I think when you say OMG, I think you better count that as a sin and you better put it under the blood. Reducing God to three letters. You better repent. You can't even say God. Something wrong with your life. You know, Jews will not say spell out God. There'll be G dash D. And, and reverence, in case we misspell it. No, you know you're doing wrong. You know you're not doing what God told you to do. It's called a guilt conscience. I love preaching. I love the word of God. I love all you out there. It's why we do these. It's a great chapter. And just to remind you of what, everything we learned tonight, Psalms is your songbook. This was sung by David. It's a psalm of David. He sung this. 
Imagine getting up in church on Sunday morning and say, okay, everyone open your Bibles to Psalms 40 and let us sing. I've never been to church where they say open up the, open up the Psalms instead of the hymn. Never. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he blessed.